I wasn't going to make a video about this, but how in the world can we not when we finally have the answers here? This has to be what's going on. You know how everybody talks about the hockey gods, the guys up there pulling the puppet strings that control these games, the nicks, the bounces, the posts, the shin pads, etc. One hockey god is just playing be a pro and his player is Connor Bedard. This dude, he is essentially the hockey equivalent of a god as he storms through Slovakia, the entire country of Slovakia, and buries an overtime winner, giving Canada the 4-3 win in the quarterfinals. Now, you might look at this result and say, oh, 4-3, Canada won. Wow, it took them a while to get there, but Canada beat Slovakia in a game that a lot of people probably would have guessed Canada would have won. Nice. But really, a sentence like that, that does not encapsulate the craziness of this game. This might have been the best World Juniors game I've ever freaking watched. Now, I'm only 22 years old, so I've missed out on a ton of the classics, and I only really got into hockey when I was 11, when the Canucks made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. That's really when I started watching and paying attention to these types of things. But this might have been the most exciting game I had ever seen. I wasn't around in the fan base when Team Canada beat the USA in 2010's Olympic gold, but I was there for 2014. I saw that game. I saw Team Germany in 2018. I saw the other international things. I saw Mason McTavish. I saw the Carter Hart show. I saw Kale McCarr put on a show. I saw all the other things, Team USA, all over the past few years here. But man, this might have been the best freaking hockey game I'd ever seen. And it's not because both teams played incredibly well. It's because the hockey gods, they came in here and showed off their true power as... You know when people play EA NHL, you talk about ice tilt. Oh man, I had a really good chance on the breakaway, but it went off the post. Oh, I had a really good cross crease, but it was stopped by the goalie and an automatic save. I don't know how that didn't go in. Ice tilt in the NHL video games is when you are out playing somebody and that somebody ends up winning the game because he gets one bounce, one shot, one goal, or maybe multiple goals. Your goalie doesn't go out to play and you keep on getting cheesed. I feel like Canada was on pace to getting that applied to them. The hockey gods, for some reason, had some sort of copy-paste formula from the EA algorithm into this game right here, as Canada wildly outshot Team Slovakia over here, 57-27, to 27, the final shots on goal, and you had yourselves multiple opportunities towards the end of the third period and in overtime for Canada to get it done, but they just couldn't do it. Now, admittedly, this wasn't the tale of the entire game. The first little part of the game saw Canada actually go out there and take the lead they had a 2 0 lead. Connor Bedard had himself a very nice breakaway goal off a turnover at the Slovak blue line. And then you had yourselves Dylan Genther on the power play. Delay of game power play, by the way, where Bedard goes down to Brennan Othman. Othman goes across and Genther buries it. By the way, I'm still not over the fact that the Canucks could have had Genther, but they chose Connor Garland and OEL instead. But Canada had a 2 0 lead. And even though the Slovaks had their own game plan in the first period of cross-checking the heck out of everybody, cross-checking Conor Bedard and just doing everything they can to ramp up the physicality, they were able to come back. And you had yourselves multiple goals here scored by Team Slovakia to give Canada something to fight for. It all starts with Canada going on the penalty kill. The face-off is won by the Slovaks. It's given over to Simon Nemec, second overall pick in the 2022 NHL Draft. He takes a long shot and it goes off of Libor Nemec's leg and right past the goalie. Simon Nemec then proceeds to blow a kiss to the crowd. And that pissed a lot of Canadian fans off. Man, Simon Nemec made himself an enemy in this country, and I'm honestly all here for it. Seeing that confidence, that swagger, and the disrespect. Oh, man, you watch entertainment things to get emotional? That made you emotional. Then, give it a few minutes, Zach Ostapchuk makes things 3-1 to one once again. He comes in down the right wing. He takes a shot after faking off the pass to the middle. He's looking down at his linemate the entire time before shooting it. Very nice opportunity. And then, this is where things sort of go a little bit wonky for Team Canada. As Connor Bedard, in a 3-1 to hockey game, ends up taking the puck at the Slovak blue line. But he ends up losing a handle on it. He drops it off, and the Slovaks come back the other way. They have a 2-on-1 rush. Connor Bedard is back-checking, and he dives forward, 
pretty much sliding, tobogganing himself into the post. This takes him completely out of the play. He's down there on the ice, and the Slovaks just play it out in front. Robert Baca was there, and he scores, making it 3-2. to two. Connor Bedard was unfortunately a human being on that play. That was probably like the worst shift that Bedard had the entire tournament so far, and it results in a goal against in the most important game the team has played up to this point, but it's still 3-2. The third period then comes along, and Team Slovakia gets yet another goal. It's Libor Nemec, who is able to get set out in front by Philip Meshar on a very nice scrambly play by Team Canada, and this is where the ice tilt starts to come out and showcase itself. Because from this point on, Canada had so many opportunities. They had power plays, Simon Nemec went to the box for cross-checking Bedard. They had posts, multiple posts towards the end of the game, or the end of the third, excuse me, and the overtime period. Olin Zellweger got robbed right in front with the pads of the Slovak goaltender, Adam Gajan. You also had yourselves so many more opportunities for Bedard. The guy had 10 shots in this game, five shots in overtime, and he was just whipping pucks on goal, only for them to all get stopped by the Slovak goaltender, Adam Gajan was amazing, dude. Like, I cannot believe how good this one guy was. Now, to be fair, some of these shots maybe could have gone a little bit higher. They could have maybe gone a little bit to the side, but still, he gets enough on a Shane Wright shot to deflect it off the crossbar. Connor Bedard hit himself a post as well. So many opportunities for Canada to score, but they just can't buy one. The Canadian goaltender, Tomasz Milic, made himself an amazing save, too, towards the end of the game, where he has to sprawl out and get the glove on, I believe it was Petrovsky for Slovakia. But either way, the busier of the two goaltenders was definitely Adam Gajan from the Slovak team. Absolutely incredible performance that made Canadians fans all over the world kind of worried. Because, hey, this is the type of game that your favorite team is going to lose, right? You're getting all the opportunities, all the zone time, all the shots, and you just can't beat this goaltender, you just can't beat the red iron. This is the type of game where all they need is one measly rush, one bad break to get a two-on-one, and then they're going to score because that's how hockey works. But then the hockey gods said, nah, because number 16, embodying the spirit of hockey itself, goes out there and goes Connor McDavid style as he, at the end of a 50-something second shift, takes a shot. It gets stopped, ends up taking the puck out on the rebound and dangling by the whole Slovak team, dangling the goalie too, and then making it 4-3 Canada to send the team to the semifinals against Team USA. Connor Bedard with three points on the night after giving Slovakia the turnover they needed to make it 3-2 in the second period, after getting denied so many times by both the goalie, by the shin pad of the defender in front, there was a chance where he had an open net, it went off the stick blade of the Slovak defender and then the guy's shins. This was a wild hockey game, and I believe this is going to be a classic, dude. Slovakia, y'all played a tough game. That was overwhelming watching this team go out there and just take advantage of their chances, hang in there, play well defensively, be able to hold on and keep this Canadian team to a 3-3 deficit, killing off the Simon Nemec penalty at the end of regulation. It was wild. And the best part is, for Team Canada, it's only going to get more intense because Team USA is coming out on Wednesday here, and that's going to be the matchup seeing what the Americans and the Canadians can do. While the Canadians struggled to get here, the USA squad had an 11-1 to win. So, yeah, we'll see what happens when that game comes out on Wednesday, but uh, talk to the comments your thoughts about Conor Bedard, the showdown, the stardom, just the absolute wizardry, the defiance, how good this guy is. He is a hockey god in the context of the sport, because with Eric Lindros's record in the rearview mirror, with Jordan Eberle's record in the rearview mirror, all he's got now to look forward to breaking is Peter Forsberg's individual single season world junior point record. Now that's going to be tough to beat because Forsberg, I believe, was 19 when he put up 10 points against Japan and had 30-something points on the tourney, but Connor Bedard, just breaking Lindros's point record, breaking Everly's goal record, I think that's good enough for him, at the moment at least, right? There's still higher mountains to climb. But Connor Bedard, man, 34 points in 14 games for Canadian World Junior Hockey and overtaking Lindros by three with seven fewer games too. 
Talk to the cons your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and bye.